Hi, today we're going to talk about the brand new Fate of the Norns Ragnarok lore book called Denizens of the North. The book is published in three formats, uh, all of them color interior. There'll be soft cover, hard cover, and premium hard cover. The premium version, which we're looking at here, has 70 pound paper where the colors just pop off the page. This book is dedicated to all of the lore within Midgard, which is the realm of mankind. The first omens of Ragnarok are where the sun and moon are devoured by two celestial wolves, and this causes turmoil in the heavens as well as in Midgard. The first chapter is dedicated to those who wield power within Midgard. Those are the kings, the queens, the heroes, and the villains. Many of these characters appear later in the book in different sections, referenced for how they influence locales, cultures, and even adventures. One of the main struggles is for King Harald's Norvig. He had many sons and never left any clear lines of succession, and so now there's a bloody battle for the throne. To the south is the Holy Roman Empire, run by Emperor Otto. They can't seem to breach the Danevirke, which is overseen by Jarl Gorm the Old. To the east, the Baltic tribes will not let them pass. So the Crusaders were forced west into Wessex, where King Ethelstan is at the head of the Crusader vanguard heading north. To complicate matters further, some of King Harald's offspring have sided with King Ethelstan and are looking to gain allies in unlikely places in order to regain the throne. You'll also find some very interesting characters from the Swedish epic, the Kalevala. Fate of the Norns incorporates many different cultures, stories, and sagas from the northern peoples. So you'll find tales from Hibernia, the Skraelings, the Russian and Baltic peoples as well. For those who wish to adventure in outer Midgard, in the periphery of the realm of mankind, uh, there are many interesting characters and plot hooks for every compass point. To the west, you have the newly created Commonwealth of Islandia. You've got Hibernia and the struggle between the clansmen of Athkliath and the Northmen. To the south, you've got the Papal States and the struggle of power with the Holy Roman Empire. To the east, the Byzantine Empire and the capital Miklagard, where the Northmen have established trade routes. To the far east, you've got the Baltic tribes and their ferocity. To the far north, you have the dominion of Svalbard and Queen Drifa's iron rule along with the wells and portals leading into exotic outer realms like Jotunheim. Some of the characters presented may also be deceased, but have left their legacy in many important ways, while others have ties to the storylines that are happening in the heavens between the gods and the Jotuns, and they'll probably appear, very least be mentioned again, in the next book called Lords of the Ash. Denizens of the North covered Midgard, and Lords of the Ash will cover the other realms. You can see this right here on this really nice rendering of Yggdrasil. On the facing page you've got Midgard, and Jormungand denotes where Midgard ends and Outer Midgard begins. That brings us to the next chapter, Locales of Majesty. In this chapter you're going to find all of the really interesting places within Midgard. From Evengard and the cornerstone of the world, where many important wells and gateways to other realms lie. This chapter also deals with Outer Midgard and a lot of the locales that impact the denizens of Midgard. You will find fabled shrines, glorious markets, mystical burial grounds, the impenetrable Danevirke that keeps the Crusaders out of Midgard. These locales tie the world together in a rich tapestry that's just ready for adventure. You'll find that each one of these locations ties into the other chapters as well, touching upon the characters, the monsters, the locations, and the magical items. There's a lot of room for your players to be able to carve out a niche for themselves and create an outpost or maybe a village or a kingdom. 
And what epic Viking saga isn't complete without some craziness happening out on the open seas? And perhaps your players wish to travel down to Miklagard to make untold fortunes. To secret societies and societies of the Northmen, the Crusaders, along with foreign legions as well. Then we're into magic items. Now each one of these magic items you'll find illustrated. Each one of them has a backstory, how they were crafted, and their special place in a unique world like Ragnarok. And that'll bring us to the Denizens chapter. The monsters in this chapter are either natives to Midgard, or they have come in such numbers that crossing paths with them might be a more common occurrence. Each one of these beasties has their own 5x5 power and skill board, so you can customize these creatures for every single encounter, keeping your players a little bit off balance and surprised every time. Now, some of these monsters are going to make an appearance at the saga that's at the end of the book, uh, while others tie into the locales and the new archetypes. For some of the archetypes, they'll be companions. For other archetypes, some of these creatures will be thanes. Even the Skraelings make an appearance here. You'll find that this chapter complements the denizens found in the core rulebook really nicely. And that brings us to the Viking life chapter. This chapter covers the society of the Northmen. You will find sections about the law of the Northmen, the fellowship of the Northmen, and how they kept time, drink recipes, and entertainment justice, and superstitions. Tables are included, so with a quick rune pull, you can generate the backdrop to a town. The Skraelings are an interesting bunch. They're what you would call the Inuit or the North American Indians, and so we've dedicated a small chapter to them because of their importance in the discovery of the New World. And then we reach the player archetypes. Denizens of the North introduces six new player archetypes. Here you find the Raging Berserker, the Druid, who comes with their own magic system, Fardranger, which is the Nomad, the Shirugengen, which are the Dark Walkers, as well as the Stalo, which is the Master of Controlled Combat. Denizens of the North introduces some new game concepts. There's a new magic system called Fervanlung. There are new meta tags for the runic gaming system and dozens of new powers, both active and passive, as well as skills. The brand new blacksmith player archetype also adds the much-awaited crafting system that allows you to create wondrous effects with realm ores, creature reliquaries, and the fabled Dvergar engineering. The system is open-ended to allow players to create all manner of things. Now the Norn section, or the GM section, adds many new cool things that the players can do. From building and engaging in naval warfare with longships, to establishing outposts, villages, and possibly kingdoms. The section also explains how to handle mass battles with hundreds if not thousands of combatants all at once, using the runic game system. And for those who prefer not to play with minis, there's a very simple conversion that allow you to create a very abstracted battlefield. There's also a section here that deals with an expanded life path system to that which you find in the core rulebook. Just like our other books, at the back of Denizens of the North you will find a playable saga. This saga is called Cornerstone of the World, and it takes you back to Evangard, which you discovered during Fafnir's Treasure. Deep within the mines is an evil of unimaginable proportion. And so the players must discover what the problems are and try to set things right. It's a saga that's built for two to six players and should run you a couple of game sessions easily. There are some new 2015 pre-generated characters that would work really well with this saga. And the last chapter is the starter vignette chapter. And this is where we give you a bunch of seed ideas to run your own sagas. Uh, every section has a breakdown of where it happens in the world, what time period, who the main players are, 
and um, a starting point along with several possible finishing points and a plot twist somewhere along the way. These are very good for summarizing what happens between the onset of Ragnarok all the way to the end of the Second Age of Ragnarok. At the end, you'll find some printable materials. And that's about it. 424 pages of Viking goodness. Thanks for watching. Demon soldiers!